Hey folks, this is going to be kind of a follow-up video to my Iridescent Eldar Armor experiment video because I have still been experimenting with the Eldar Armor because I'm not really happy with this, either the contrast over the metallics or the weird nail stuff. Like, there's something about the contrast over the metallics and the effect from the weird nail stuff that feels too... aggressive for the Eldar. Like, it feels not sophisticated enough. And I kind of wish I'd actually done my Space Marines with this kind of uh, coloured metallic armour, because I think it would actually really suit them. And I didn't feel like it was correct for the Eldar, I don't know why. There's something about the sort of the the, the bone singers and the, the use of um, more naturalistic ways of creating their civilization that puts me off. It feels too mechanical to have them decked out in shiny metal like that and like i might actually i've got some space marines that i'm painted so i might actually go back and not redo my entire army or anything but like i might paint a couple with kind of dark metallic green and see how they come out right so i i, I have a funny feeling they'll probably look awesome so i i decided not to go with this uh in the i finished up my guardians which you can go follow me on my instagram if you want carl.benjamin.100 uh basically all i do is post 40k <laughs> stuff but um the the rangers came out okay not dissatisfied with them uh i wish the cloaks had been a bit lighter actually i should have worked harder to make them lighter but i should have started on a lighter version of gray to be honest but they came out okay i mean they're in the snow so i wanted them to have sort of that color but as you can see the um the metallic highlights on the the armor i was reasonably happy with it um i started with uh, very dark colour, which is base iron warriors for the metal, and then layered it up with iron hand steel and iron breaker to get quite a, a strong, shiny effect on it. And then I went over it with um, a very dark blue, like celestium blue, contrast celestium blue, uh, then to uh, azure blue, and then a very um, greenish ethematic blue which is uh, quite nice, and they came out quite attractively, actually. It wasn't too bad, but these guys only have a small amount of armor plating, so as you can see, it's not too big a deal. Um, it didn't feel too alien to the Eldar, and these these guys, out there, I guess I'm just not that fussed about the, the rangers, you know, they're not, they're not the centerpiece of my army or anything. But um, like I said, I'm happy with how they came out, and uh, hopefully they'll be quite good to use. So anyway, so today I started... Uh, painting up my guardians again and this is what i've got so far so i thought i'd just take you through the 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 the, the process um so i decided to basically airbrush all my guardians with leviathan purple contrast paint which is great because it looks like black basically it's so phenomenally dark uh, especially when you airbrush it on onto something that has been base coated black you basically can't tell that it's purple um but it fades up very nicely if you're mixing and you're layering up it layers up very very nicely which is what i did on the feet with base nagaroth knight which is itself a really dark color but as you can see uh on the feet of this chap uh you can see i've highlighted just there and it gives it quite a nice naturalistic looking highlight uh that's unintrusive and on his or her bum there so that was quite good because you you want it to have something there you know it can't just be black but you don't want to be intrusive and so i started working on the armor paints uh, plates and so for the armor plates i decided to um just coat them in uh, base phoenician purple which is quite a dark but not too dark purple uh, and then i faded up with base mccrag blue now i do like base mccrag blue although it's the ultramarine color um it's a nice color because it's kind of a purplish blue and so it there's probably some technical term for this right but i don't know any technical terms for any of this because i just do this for fun uh, but it's it the the tone is very compatible with the purple and so that faded up really nicely and then to highlight i mixed um, a crag blue with some caskink green uh to give it uh, the sort of near finished highlight and then on the very end of the edge i just put a little bit of green there which you can see um, this is a really close in shot but um and i thought it came out quite nice actually you know it gave it because it's uh three different colors and not necessarily ones that would naturally flow into either um it gives it quite an unusual and kind of alien-esque effect i thought 
and it felt more natural. It didn't feel as kind of artificial as the shiny metal plates. Now, I'm not going to lie, it was a lot more energy intensive. It took, <laughs> it took me all day to do this because it was a bank holiday. And I thought, oh, I've got a couple of hours, I'll do it. Um, but when it came to the uh, shoulder and head and the flutes at the back, whatever they are, I really didn't know what to do. So I did some experimenting. I didn't take a photo of the experiments, which I'm annoyed about because I really should have done. So I, I didn't think I was going to make a video about this. Um, so I started with yellow, um, just uh, towel layer ochre, and then fading up till it was very, very, very light slash white on the edge. I wasn't happy with it, though. Uh, it felt too fire dragon, frankly. And I did the same with the red on the other side. Again, felt too fire dragon. Didn't like it. So I started with this very... Um, Lothan blue, which is very much baby blue, and then I used um, Avalon Sunset with a mix of this to give it a kind of greenish effect, actually, which is kind of like oceanic green that you can see at the back there, and it, it looks, you know, it looks interesting. It gives a kind of eggshell effect, and then to give it highlights, uh, for some reason, full grim layer pink uh, makes it nearly whitish at the very edges. And so I, I sort of highlighted the front of the face, the tips and the, you know, the rims and stuff with this pink. And I didn't hate it, which is a good start, considering I'm thinking about the making this the colour scheme for my entire army. Because again, it felt much more natural, right? It, it, and that's... I, I want to give the Elder a, a less industrial feel. Uh, and so I was reasonably happy with it. It just looked better than the yellow and the red. And I didn't want to do blue because there's a lot of blue on it anyway. And a green, I mean, I've just done an entire squad of Striking Scorpion, so I, didn't, I kind of wanted to avoid just hard green. Although maybe I could have done green into different other colours. But I just didn't feel like it. Uh, and then it came to the gun. I really wasn't sure what to do with the gun, to be honest. Um, I went for red just because it was a strongly contrasting colour from the rest of the model. Um, and highlighted it up with yellow, just again, just... Uh, this Avalon Sunset. <sighs> I don't know how happy I am with it, though. Because with the brass uh, sort of trim on the end of it, it looks kind of cornate, and that's not the image that I was going for with it. Uh, I mean, I like brass on the Elder, because it looks antique, you know, it looks unusual. And so I've, I've tried to minimally use it where I can. I use, use as little silver as possible. Um, and it's not that... I'm actually really happy with the paint job that I've done there actually, which is much better than I normally do, frankly. But I don't know how happy I am. I started with corn red, which is quite a muted red, and I highlighted it up into Mephiston red, which is a very bold scarlet colour, and then I just used the uh, Avalon Sunset that was still on my wet palette. Um, and I don't, I don't, again, I don't hate it, but I'm not, like, in love with it either. So... Basically, I want your opinion on this, and I would like uh, I would like your aesthetic input. Because, I, I mean, I'm not displeased with him at all. I've got him here, but you probably can't see him, because the camera will probably not focus on him. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not displeased, but I'm not, like, as thrilled as I thought I'd be, because I've got a Wraith Lord, and I'll probably get some other fairly big bits, and I'll want them all to have basically the same colour scheme. Um... And so the the Nagroth Knight and the uh, McCrag Blue base under sort of coatings and the plates, that I'll probably keep because I am happy with that. I think that looks pretty good. Um, I'll practice on a few more Guardians. I've got 10 Guardians to do, and this is going to take ages. But uh, I'll practice on a few more Guardians to get them really solid because it looks, you know, kind of interesting and enchanting. But uh, like I said, I'm not necessarily sold on the gun or the eggshell greeny blue on this on the helmet and the shoulder pads so basically let me know what you think i just thought this would be a quick video to give you an update on my eldar armor experiments so i want them to look good you know i want them to look really good because like my my sort of dark angels if they are even not properly painted dark angels that was me learning to paint. And I've done some okay ones. And my Thousand Suns I'm actually generally, overall, really, really pleased with. Because I put a lot of work into them. But the thing is, they're very predictable. You know what a Thousand Suns army looks like. Because 
they've got basically one color through the whole thing and uh don't get me wrong they look great but you it's you can't be very creative with thousand suns uh, and i thought oh okay elder perfect you know this is a time shine there's beautiful aesthetic models you can do practically anything you want with the color scheme because who cares right uh and so i want to get them really looking good so when they hit the table very impactful um I've set up a 40k area on my Discord server for this now, so you'll find a link pinned in the comments, because I don't know if I can actually put links in the description yet, because you've got to have so many hours of content on YouTube before they'll let you do it now. Um, so I'll pin it in the comments. Uh, come and tell me what you think. Come and show me your art as well. I'd love to see your models. And uh, I'll see you later.